thank you. Uh, yeah, so, uh, hi. <laughs> How is everyone? Um, my name is uh, is Bogdan, uh, and I am from Poland. I live in England now, uh, which should not come as a surprise, because we're all here, pretty much. <laughs> uh, uh, it's okay to laugh at this if I say it. Um, we, just, we just thought we'd show, we'd show uh, uh, English people what it's like to be colonized. <laughs> but too soon. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, but it does mean that that, that I, I had to uh, learn English from various sources, and and, um, and one of them was. Do you, do you know the, um, the the Penguin Classics books that used to cost a quid or, or sevens water, which is what the quid was worth back then? And and that's so they were really cheap, and they were the books in English that I could afford. So for a while, I thought this was how you talked. Uh, you know, the kind of Jane Austen or, or Charles Dickens English. I thought the proper response is you want sauce on your chips was, oh, kind sir, you spoil me with your choice of condiments. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I moved to Birmingham. <laughs> first, first couple of months were really difficult. Um, and, but I love it, don't get me wrong, I think Birmingham is great. Um, what's the difference? Yes, represents represent. <laughs> West Midlands. Uh, uh, so yeah, uh, that will have to do as an introduction for the next board, uh, which is called Telling Time. Uh, it was almost exactly like this. <laughs> Lesson three, Telling Time. Exercise one. Listen to the questions, look at the pictures, and answer the questions. Scene one. Meet George. George is working. He is sitting behind a desk. Look at the big clock on the wall above George. What time is it? What time is it? Now? It's two o'clock. It is two o'clock for me. I would like it to be less o'clock, and I'm sure George would agree, because now it's almost eight o'clock. It's close to too little, too late o'clock, and you know what I mean, right? You know my meaning, my significance. Please say you do, because I need to answer all these questions, and George, he'd like to know too. Scene two, George! is not working. The sun was in his eyes, so he moved a little to the side. George is taking a break. What time is it? What time is it? Now it's fear o'clock. Sharp. How sharp you ask? Well, sharp enough to pierce my ears with the ring of my inner voice whispering, you've made your choice, but there's nothing wrong with your life that somebody could not fix. So now I'm tattooing my buddy with lists of things to do and things to see and things to buy and things to be. And George, he kills himself gradually with bullet points because his words don't even rhyme. And his words don't have a beat. His words do not keep time. And his text is not completed. His gaps that he needs to fill in and it's falling apart. As I speak, scene three, George is walking down the street. He is taking a cigarette out of his pocket. George is going to catch his bus home. What time is it? What time is it? Now it's slow o'clock. It's oh so quiet and no clock, no bang, no whimper, no thunder, and no roar. You want more? I want more. And George, he used to want more too, but that was eons ago. Now he scratches a match on his soul, and watches it light up like a word in me and me. I scratch his world on my soul, and watch it light up like a match. I look through the window, I see George walking down the street smoking a cigarette. And just before he reaches the bus stop, I, I move a little to the side. So he walks straight into the sitting sun. You'll never see him again. Yes. Mm -hmm.